Welcome to our RISE Luncheon. We hope that this event informs, inspires, and connects you even closer to our mission. As a child, there was a lot of trauma that went on in my life. And now I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Melissa from Mercy Street to give us our invocation. We are glad that you are with us today. My name is Reverend Melissa Mayer. I'm the pastor of Mercy Street, which is a part of Chapelwood United Methodist here in Houston. And this past year has been like no other. Whether it's uh, the global pandemic or us as a society wrestling with what it means to create equitable spaces for one another, it's been a long year. And so the work of Santa Maria has continued in the midst of this pandemic. At Mercy Street, we are happy to be a part of the Santa Maria family. We miss being with the women and uh, the kids every single week. And we're just so proud of the Santa Maria staff and their clients and what they've done. So today I wanna offer a prayer, perhaps a, a way that we can be Prayer is just really setting our intentions. So how do we set our intentions as we move into the rest of this year? And what does your specific support of Santa Maria look like? At Mercy Street, um, we are just proud to not only financially support, but to be a part of the work that they are doing. So let's gather our hearts and our intentions. Um, I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna pray in the name of God and in the name of Jesus, but I invite you to open your heart and pray as you are led. So let's pray together. O oh God of love and life, we recognize that there are spaces within our own families that feel weary and worn out. And so God, we pray that you would breathe new life. We pray for the staff of Santa Maria, Maria and the, the ways that they have been trying to provide that safe space, a safe harbor for their clients. We ask that you would uh, restore the places in which they feel weak and weary. We give you thanks for a place like Santa Maria that provides the necessary treatment for women who are looking to make a, uh, an important change in their lives. And so we pray for uh, the work and the mission of Santa Maria. We then also pray, God, that you would give each of us the courage to know what our part is. Because the story of addiction and mental health impacts us all. And as we move into this space of a pandemic after the pandemic, we know that we need to be able to care for one another and create an environment here in Houston that does so. So turn our hearts and our intentions towards this work we are called to. And together we set our prayer in this way. And I pray in your name and in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Melissa, for those inspiring words. We are so glad you have joined us today. If you are new to the Santa Maria community, we have next a special short film to tell you more about our mission guided work. If you are one of our many supporters joining us today to celebrate lives transformed, we know you will deeply appreciate our story of hope as told by three of our participants. <laughs> the mission of Santa Maria Hostel is to empower women and their families to lead healthy, successful, productive, and self-fulfilling lives. We meet each family where they are on their recovery journey, from community-based prevention and intervention programs, to addiction treatment, to long-term housing and recovery support. What brought me to Santa Maria is I was on my 21st criminal charge related to my drug and alcohol use. I had already lost all seven of my children, and I was defeated. I was ready to surrender. I was tired. I was either going to die out there or learn to live. Santa Maria loved me when I couldn't love myself. I had an amazing treatment team. And in 2014, I found the opportunity to remain plugged in in Santa Maria uh, through the Peer Advisory Council. Now I am a peer recovery support specialist for Santa Maria. I 
stand alongside peers just like me, women just like I am, empowering them, advocating with them, for them, teaching them, helping them break down big and small barriers that could hinder their progress in recovery. We are one of the only places in the entire state where a mother can bring her children with her while she accesses treatment. So we're able to keep that family together and work with both mom and children, providing wraparound services, parenting support, and helping that family get to a place of stability so that when they go back out in the community, they feel successful. Addiction um, doesn't discriminate. It comes in all kinds of shapes, sizes, and colors. I grew up with the a very, very, very good family with two parents. My mother was a registered nurse. My father was an engineer. I had a nine-year-old daughter. I was addicted to crack cocaine. I was emotionally dead. I was spiritually dead. Santa Maria restored me. It, it, Santa Maria gave me hope. Um, it showed me how to live. It taught me how to trust the process. Human capital is something nobody can take away from you. Currently, I am a recovery coach for WWC, which is Women with Children. I'm an advocate, I'm a resource broker, I'm a truth teller, I'm a friend. <laughs> They're learning that recovery has to come first because in order to be a good mother, you have to recover and then the rest follows. Our families come to us with many challenges, but they also come with so many amazing strengths. And so we work with them to discover who they truly are and reach beyond their problems and help them to see the beautiful future that they have. I found myself at Santa Maria, August 2nd of 2016, and due to the effects of drugs and alcohol and the role they played in my life. After completing 90 days of inpatient treatment at Santa Maria, I transitioned over to the VIEWS program, and that is a service that is available by Santa Maria for veterans. It's a 12 to 18 month program, and it can be the catalyst for change if you want it to be. I was able to obtain a bachelor's degree in human services. My concentration was on geriatrics, so it gives me an opportunity to help the seniors and just be there for someone like someone was there for me. Thank you for giving me my life back. And also thank you for allowing me to grow as an individual as a person and as a member of society, a productive member of society. I just want to thank Santa Maria for teaching me, empowering me, encouraging me, and restoring my own personal faith in myself and for allowing me to be part of this amazing organization. Thank you. Thank you, Santa Maria. Thank you for saving my life. Last year alone, we provided services to 6,274 women, children, and their families. Our services range from in-residence to outpatient treatment, community-based education, and linkage to care and coaching. Our dedicated staff is led by Nadine Scamp, the CEO of Santa Maria. Under her thoughtful guidance, we have strategically increased our continuum of care, providing the individually tailored services to meet our clients where they are on their recovery journey. The road to recovery can take many different paths and Santa Maria is here to pave the way for women and children from recovery from substance use disorder to recovering from homelessness, incarceration, trafficking, abuse, and other traumas. Santa Maria has the experience and compassion to offer a hand up and change lives. Here is Nadine Scamp, our CEO, to tell you more about this unprecedented year. This past year has been challenging for everyone with COVID, and we are no exception. The day after the Houston Rodeo shut down last year, our staff met together to finalize protocols and determine how we were going to handle this pandemic. We put into place safety measures to make sure that our families were safe during this year. And our staff rose to the challenge. They have been here day after day as essential workers, making sure that recovery is possible even when things are shut down, even when it is hard to connect, 
they are here and they are serving women and families each and every day and giving them hope for a future. We are so thankful and blessed for our staff and for our supporters. We could not have done this year without you. When the school shut down, we shifted and added teachers to our job descriptions and we started a, a new learning center for our children. And your support helped make that happen, making sure that we had the technology and the capability to keep their learning going. Our Caring for Two team went out across Houston and visited their families, making sure that they had the essential supplies such as diapers, prescriptions, food that they needed to keep their family healthy. And they served as healthcare educators, making sure that our families understood what this pandemic meant and the resources that were available for them to keep them healthy and safe. Thank you again for all of your support during this year. And I encourage you to think about donating this year during our event. Your support means more than ever. You help us to make sure that our women and families are able to rise up and reclaim their hope and their purpose. Thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts for being our supporters and being our partners in recovery. Thank you, Nadine. This has been a year where we have been proud of our resilience in the face of almost constant challenge and change. We are grateful for your dedication and leadership. To those of you watching, please consider a donation in support of the compassionate staff here at Santa Maria. Our RISE Visionary Award is reserved and given to a special person who embodies a vision for the well-being, respect, and dignity of the women of our community. Always a champion and visionary for women in Houston, Ellen Cohen is our 2021 Visionary Award recipient. Ellen served for 10 years as the Executive Director of the Annual Jewish Committee and 18 years as the CEO for the Houston Area Women's Center. She was elected as the Texas State Representative in the Texas Legislature in 2006. She continued her career in public service as a Houston City Council member for District C beginning in 2012. From 2016 on, she was honored to serve as Houston's first Jewish mayor pro tem. Ellen is a 50-year breast cancer survivor. We are sorry that we can't be in person to give Ellen this award, but now let's hear from her. I think the inspiration for my, my life's work, my activities is really from my family. And I think that happens for a lot of people. My mother was very active in the community. I remember her going door to door collecting for March of Dimes and Red Cross and those types of things and working in the school. And my father uh, was an attorney, but he was the first person to do a Toys for Tots collection over the holidays. And this is in Cleveland, Ohio. And he also was extraordinarily compassionate about people and their, their life experiences. And he grew up uh, with a a mother who was widowed and he was the youngest of four boys so he didn't have it easy um, and I just watched him and I listened to him and his compassion was so strong it, and he was and he was political um, he didn't run for office but he was the person behind a lot of people that ran for office so that must have uh, infused my body and um, somewhere as I went along in life uh, that's that's where it came out that's what got me involved in, in helping women and in politics. My late husband Lyon and I moved here from Montreal, which is where he was from. I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. And we moved here with our two teenagers. I don't advise that necessarily to move from one country to another with teenagers, but it worked out. And we realized that people in Houston accepted us for who we were. I mean, we looked around the world to move. We left Quebec uh, and wanted to move somewhere, and I was still an American, so we could move anywhere. And we realized that Houston had you know, black gold under the ground and intellectual black gold up here, and people accepted us. We didn't have to be a fourth generation. Uh, we just had to work hard and give our word and produce. And I think that played into my acceptance of going into politics as well, which was 
Cleveland, you know, Houston was so good to me. And if I have a chance to, in this case, be in the legislature and have some effect, um, it's a way of giving back. And that followed me into my tenure at city council. I served 10 years as a CEO of the American Jewish Committee, which is a human rights organization. Then, and I was on the board of the Houston Area Women's Center. Then I was asked to be the CEO of the Houston Area Women's Center, which I know, you know, Santa Maria knows extremely well because the Women's Center and Santa Maria work closely together. So I was there for 18 years. So I can't tell you how, you know, as a counselor that I saw the growth of someone, but I can tell you as a CEO, Every day I came to work, even if there were problems, I knew we were making changes in people's lives, or at least we were empowering them to make those changes for themselves. In 2003, my husband passed away, and I was at a dinner somewhere, and two of the men I know well said to me, would you ever consider running for office? And like a lot of women, uh, not so much today, but even back a decade, I said, oh, I know, you know, I, I don't know enough about this and I don't know. And then we talked again and they said, would you consider it? And the reason I thought about it was that when I started at the Houston Area Women's Center, even on the board, I mean, there was the idea that if a woman was raped, what was she wearing? What part of town was she in? Why was she out so late? If she was being abused and battered, what did she say? How did she provoke it? And it took a lot to change that ship, to move it. And I thought, well, if I was involved in that, in the changing of ideas, maybe politics was the direction I should head in. And I, I might add, so anyway, I, I did say yes at some point, and I fortunately won my first term in the legislature. So I think, I think we're moving in the right direction, and I feel so strongly that when women are at the table, we really make a difference. We bring to that table the sense of uh, consensus that we do in the family, uh, of, bringing, of being able to handle multiple problems at one time, of trying to keep arguments down. And I'm sure you've heard this expression, you know, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. So, you know, we need women there. We need more women to run for office. You don't have to be expert in a particular subject to, uh, to run for office. And I think that's where women have held back. You know, I don't know enough about budgeting. Uh, I'm not as familiar as I should be with something. It's okay. You'll get it. You'll get it fast. We're fast learners, too. People who themselves have experienced this kind of um, difficulties, whether it's domestic and sexual violence or drugs, would be free to feel that it's it's not going to be a black mark against them if they speak out. It's the same thing with mental health. I mean, if you've had issues around mental health and you've sought psychiatric help, I think if you talk about it and if you're someone that people look up to, whether you're a sports figure, whether you're in politics or business or social services, you speak up, then people say, well, wait a minute, that's okay. I, can, I don't feel that I can't get help now. You know, she did it or he did it, and I can do it too. I mean, I'm a 50-year breast cancer survivor, 50-year breast cancer survivor. But when I told my story, when I came out to tell my story, not one, I never knew one woman, one woman that ever had breast cancer. There were, but they wouldn't talk about it because of the shame attached. And it made a big difference. I was living in Montreal. It made a big difference when I talked about it. It started a program called Reach to Recovery, and that was all through Canada by the time we left uh, Montreal. But it was because when I started talking about it, all of a sudden women came out of the woodwork. I I think the city, the state, and the federal government have to invest a lot more money 
in programs such as uh, Santa Maria um, to make it possible to be able to pay the kind of salaries to attract the skilled um, professionals that you have working for you in order to attract more people who are interested in helping. I think we have to provide tremendous number of auxiliary services and mental health services. I think we have to be in the schools making sure that young people understand that being told by a boy, let's say to a girl, I want you home every night by the phone with your phone uh, because I want to be able to get you when I can and I want to know where you are. That's not love, you know, that's abuse. And to be able to really talk about dating violence so that we don't perpetuate that problem of violence. And I know that that's my history in terms of the Houston Area Women's Center, but we would have a lot of clients who had alcohol and drug abuse problems that were exacerbated or that even were caused by the violence um, either the sexual assaults or the domestic violence that people, particularly women of course, were experiencing. And um, they'd be in an abusive situation. It may have started in high school with the boyfriend and then it, you know, well, we'll get married, that'll, that'll stop. Um, and we'll have a baby, that'll help. And of course, none of that did, but the drugs helped take the edge off. The alcohol helped take the edge off and pretty soon you had a problem and we, at the Women's Center would say, before we can deal with the domestic violence problems, we need to make sure that these uh, women are being helped in terms of their drug issues, which is clearly what you did and do. And then um, very often those people would then come back to us and we could help them with the issues of domestic violence. And then of course the other piece of that is to try and get people to contribute. I said, you know, the city, state, and federal government, but individuals, individuals that can write checks to Santa Maria. Individuals who, if they can't write checks, can pick up an extra dozen diapers when they're picking them up for their own children, or um, undergarments for the women when they're, you know, when they go out and buy something for themselves and, and donate that. I mean, that makes a tremendous difference. Thank you, Ellen. We are proud to name you our 2021 Visionary Award recipient for the many achievements towards the empowerment of women in Houston. We are proud to call you a friend. And now we hear a story of hope from former client to current staff member, Autumn Still. If I did not have a Santa Maria Hostel, and the recovery community around me and family reunification court. And if I would not have rooted myself in recovery with all these amazing people, I would have for sure fell off. Uh, life got really bad. I mean, I ended up going to prison for four years, um, dealing with the wrong people. I ended up selling drugs years ago. Um, I ended up having full body organ failure. Um, I was in a coma. I couldn't walk. I was on life support. So things got pretty bad. You know, I had my daughter taken from me, you know, through CPS. I, you know, had to be placed with another family member. They showed up at my front doorstep because somebody called them. Um, they drug tested me. They did a hair follicle and it came up positive for methamphetamine. I was also sexually molested for two years of my life from a guy at my church. And um, that was a, a huge thing. So because of this trauma, I started self-medicating and I started self-medicating at the age of 12. And um, it didn't stop for 25 years. I knew then that if I could make it through all that, I could make it through this. And um, it was a blessing to me. And, um, you know, I didn't really realize, you know, mental health, different areas that connected with what was really going on internally. Um, you know, and whenever I went to Santa Maria, I was able to get help with my mental health and, you know, be able to live a productive life. Um, I had never had peer support like that or recovery support like that, never even heard of it. Um, 
until I hit Santa Maria and that was huge for me because I had somebody that walked right beside me and, and walked me through everything and showed me how I could be a better parent and give me hope and strength and everything along with it and without that and also give me confidence you know in who I was and how to like love on me whenever I couldn't love on myself and that was huge for me and I am forever grateful for them. I completed the treatment at Jacqueline and then I was able to transfer to Paschal House and I really um, liked everything Paschal House had to offer. They had recovery coaches on site. They're walking me through everything. Um, they had groups there um, several different days of the week and um, it was just a wonderful experience. Um, it gave me a little bit more freedom, but it was good because it was like baby steps. It was like baby steps whenever you leave treatment to be able to go into past shell and you still have eyes watching you that were holding you accountable. So it was a very, very good experience for me. And my little girl was with me. There was playground in the front of Paschel. She got to play with the other children. She adapted very well. She was very comfortable and everybody treated her with kindness. I believe to support Santa Maria Hostel is huge. I am now a recovery support peer specialist, a mental health peer specialist for Harris County Positive Pathways Family Reunification Court and Santa Maria Hostel. They have completely changed my life and my family. I will have five years of continuous sobriety without alcohol and without drugs on July 20th for five years. Age of 17, full blown meth head. I think that it is huge for me to be a coach for Santa Maria so I can be a beacon of light for all these wonderful women out there and to plant the seeds in their head about what recovery is and the Lord is and let it seed time and harvest. I believe that is huge for me and I believe that you know you need to have recovery coaches, peer support, all that in your life because we're the ones who know what it's like. We're the ones who can reach the souls. We're the ones who were the soldiers that have been through everything, you know? And um, they're not gonna listen to anybody else. They're gonna listen to us because we know what it is. We've been there, you know, and we've overcome it. And we can share the, the hope and strength with them and the message of what recovery is. Say this. I work for Santa Maria, and I am so blessed, and my life is wonderful. I have my learned to love myself, my and I'm very proud of myself today um, for the woman I've become. My mother looks at me, and she is just amazed. You know, my sisters look at me, and they're so amazed in everything that I've done and everything I'm doing. I still haven't reach, reached my full potential yet, but I'm working on it. And um, yeah, this is just the beginning for me. Like so many other stories of hope, Autumn's journey is the reason for our work, our passion. We are here to create an environment of healing and growth, empowerment and change. We, we really have had um, you know, some tough times with our budget this year. Uh, due to COVID, our operating costs have increased and have had other challenges. So we would really love if you could help us this year to fulfill our mission. Our staff has really been the rock of this organization. They have really learned firsthand what it means to be a frontline worker. They have really thought outside the box and have thought of great ways to serve our clientele.
me down, cause my love is too high. Bring me down, can't nothing. Bring me down, 